Hi again folks, how's all doing? This is a Hornby 4F that was sent to me by George. It's a proper Hornby 4F, not the Airfix one. So it's uh, locomotive driven. Um, George said this got stuck on some hidden points and by the time he rescued it, it suffered a bit of a meltdown. Uh, you'll see what I mean when I get it to the bench. Let's shove this into the shed and we'll see what's what. I'm gonna have to lift it a little bit because it's got traction tires on the middle drive wheels. Alrighty ho, let's get a look at this Hornby 4F, locomotive driven, uh, and as George said, it's had a bit of a meltdown. Um, let's get the endoscope in, and I'll let you see. So you can see the wires there are all melted, and the uh, underframe on the tender there is melted as well. I'm not sure if this is DCC fitted in the locomotive or the tender or whatever, don't really know anything about it other than the fact that George said it got stuck and nearly went on fire. Uh, right, we'll open it up, we'll get that out of the road, and we'll see what's what. I've always wanted to look at one of these because, you know, the old Airfix one, I've, I've got one, and uh, I've, worked, I've worked on a few of them, did one recently. You know, it's got the old... Uh, Ringfield pancake motor thing that's really noisy with lots of gears and has six traction tires. I always take the middle traction tires off. Um, this has traction tires on the middle drive wheels of the locomotive, which is nuts. I really, really wish Hornby never ever did that. It just causes trouble. Well, we'll see how it runs. So, I think we'll undo that screw. There's a bit of rust evident here as well. It's that one, it's that one. Let's just come out. Oh, that comes out. We've got bearings, which is nice. So we've got two wires coming from the tender. Two wires coming from the pickups. Right, let's lift the wheels out. There's some cobwebs on the front as well. Alright, I think we'll undo that drawbar screw on the tender. Right. Three screws on the bottom of the tender. We'll undo these. Right, that comes off. You can see the mess this has got itself into. I think I might look online and see if there's replacements. That comes apart. Oh, good grief. Right. What a mess. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. That's quite a mess. May as well just cut that. Put that to one side just now. I want to get this body and chassis separated but I cannot see how that's done. There's no screw at the front, I don't think there's a screw at the rear. I think it's just a bit stiff which has prized it sides of the body apart. There we go. Just a tight fit. Got a nice little motor. So I think really it's going to be a case of just rewiring the motor up to the socket. Uh, <laughs> which sounds easy, but I've got no idea what wire goes where. So I'm going to go online, see if we can get a replacement for this uh, tender under frame. Um, it wouldn't be the end of the world if we can. I'm sure we can sort something out. But I need to try and find out how this wires up. Before I do anything else, we'll check that the motor works. Oh dear. Hang on a minute. 
Let's just cut these wires because they could be shorting. Make sure we've got no short circuit going on. Yeah, the motor's fine. Right, I'll go online and see what's what. Okay, so a couple of days later, I've got a replacement BCC socket that's uh, already got some of the wires attached, and that'll help me figure out how on earth uh, this wires up. I've also got the replacement uh, pickup plate for the tender. Um, there's a little bit of damage uh, to the tender just in there, just where the axle sits, but I think it'll be all right. And there's a uh, melting underneath the socket. That's part of the reason I want to replace the socket altogether. So I think what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to install this and wire it all up off camera because um, it'll be a lot of soldering and a lot of fiddling that won't make very good viewing. Um, but once I've got it all done, I'll explain in detail exactly what I did. That's the plan anyway. Okay, so this is actually a few days later. Um, I ended up deciding to replace most of the wires that were fitted to the replacement socket as they weren't really long enough to, to reach the motor in the locomotive and there wasn't really uh, room in routing the wires uh, for, for joins in the wires. So it really had to be you know, a single wire going from the, the motor to the socket and from the pickups in the locomotive to the socket. Um, but I had decorators in the house for a few days and I was just too busy with other stuff to, to do any work on this. So it's had to wait for a bit. However, uh, one thing I did do off camera was clean up all the wheels uh, and then I had a wee look at the gears. And guess what I found? Yep, you guessed it. A split double gear. Imagine that. Um, I'm just plagued by split gears these days. Uh, but fortunately I had a spare one. Uh, which I've fitted. You can see there, that's a replacement double gear, which seems to work okay. I've actually started scouring the internet for double gears and uh, buying any that I see um, because, you know, these are always going to be needed and uh, it kind of looks like they're going to just disappear at some point. There are some 3D printed ones that you can get on eBay, so I've bought a couple of those to see if they're any good, but my experience of 3D printed ge gears uh, hasn't been good, but we'll see. But uh, yeah, I'll maybe try and pick up some more of these, because uh, they seem to be a fairly universal fit for most Hornby models. So if I can get a supply of them, I shall do so. I'll hog them all. But anyway, wiring this up, um, let me get a pointy thing. I think what I'll do is I'll remove the blanking plate just now, just so you can see what I did. So because the original wires in this were in such a melted mess, it was very difficult to tell what was connected to what. And uh, the service sheet doesn't have any wiring at all in it, which is extremely helpful for me. Thank you for that. Um, and I couldn't find a wiring diagram for a DCC socket. You could find wiring diagrams for how to fit a DCC uh, decoder, but nothing for actually fitting the socket. Uh, but I figured it out. So this terminal here is for uh, pickups on this side. So that a wire goes to the pickups on this side of the tender and this wire goes to the, the locomotive. This terminal here is the pickups for this side. So again, there's a wire goes to the pickup on the tender and this wire goes to the pickup on the locomotive. Uh, the other two terminals, this one and this one here, they connect direct to the motor itself and the locomotive. So a wee bit trial and error there to get the wires the right way around for the correct polarity to make the locomotive go in the right direction. But it's simple enough to figure that out really, a bit of trial and error. And as I say, I uh, replaced the wires completely to a single wire going from each of the uh, terminals on the locomotive to the socket. And that seems to work. We'll just plug this back in. Right, okay, this should go. There we are.
So we'll get this back together. And then that'll be us. Right, I'll fit this drawbar back on. It's always a problem when you uh, stop working on a locomotive and then come back to it. You forget what goes where. But at least I've got a, a good video record of what I was doing. There. It's going to go there. Remember this being a very tight fit. There we go. I hope. There we go though. But how will it run on the layout with traction tyres on the middle drive wheels? We shall find out when we pull it out the shed. Okay then, let's bring it out.
So there we are, that's George's 4F rewired, regeared, and running fine, despite those traction tyres on the middle drive wheels. Less said about those, the better, to be honest. Uh, more often than not, they just cause trouble and are better taken away. But uh, on this model, they seem to be fine. Uh, as to why the stalled on points had then melted all its wiring, well, I think it's possible the split gear was the culprit. In my previous video, I had uh, a similar issue on Oliver Cromwell, where the split gear was jamming up the gears and uh, the current draw was very high. Uh, on you know when it was stalled. Um, I think it's likely the same thing happened here and the locomotive sat there stalled for too long and then overheated. The, uh, the very thin wires simply couldn't take it and melted their insulation. It's, uh, it's very lucky that more serious damage wasn't done to be honest. I haven't actually wired up a DCC socket before so it's very useful to have to figure out how to wire it up uh, for future reference. The replacement wires are thicker than the originals but uh, they're less likely to melt. I actually wouldn't mind picking one of these up at some point. It would be good to have a nice, quiet, smooth running 4F instead of the noisy Airfix tender driven one. So yeah, yet another locomotive to look out for. Okay folks, I shall get this packed up and sent back to George. And I'll catch you later.